Okay, so why Scala for a public API? My name is Jonathan Maman. I'm a VP R&D of uh, Outbrain. A few words about Outbrain. So Outbrain is a, a content recommendation engine. So if you use CNN or ESPN or Time or Aretz, you're probably part of our half a billion uh, users who had a chance to see uh, one of our uh, almost 250 billion recommendations we generate each day. And uh, we built a public API, we released it, sorry? A month. A month. Um, so we built a public API for let marketers promote their content in our network. Uh, we launched the API about a year and a half ago. It's all 100% Scala, and here are some of our observation and with the reasons that we use Scala for uh, building the API. So in API, in REST API, you probably have JSONs all over, right? So you have uh, for, um, uh, you get JSON when you invoke a HTTP GET request, you, you send the JSON input and post, and how do you model it on in your application? So uh, luckily we have case classes, uh, the most effective way to represent uh, uh, the JSON inside your application. It brings you a serialization, deserialization, hash, uh, uh, hash code equals uh, type uh, validation, and um, it's very easy and useful. And there is a very nice uh, web tool you can use. So you just paste your JSON, and it generates you an, uh, an example of a case class, so you can just uh, put it in your uh, ID. Uh, and there are some issues. Uh, by the way, each time you see the Outbrain logo at the slide, there is some Outbrain story about it. Uh, so if I miss it, so just remind me. So uh, as you can see, um, there are some problems with a very large um, case classes that has uh, more than 22 uh, fields. And this is exactly what we had. And um, there are two solutions, either to wait or to upgrade to Scala 2.11, or to break your uh, JSONs and your uh, uh, case classes into um, uh, subclasses. Um, okay, so, so you represent each case class, basically each case class represents a DTO, data transfer object, which means basically a JSON. And the question is, um, or at least we had, we started with one case class represent, let's say, a customer. So we use the same case class for a get customer and a create customer and update customers because we didn't want to uh, have too many of them. Eventually, we have uh, understand that these are not clones and each of them represent a different use case. And retrieve is not as update, it's not as create, it's not the same use case. And um, the problem is we have one, one case class is that all, all fields become optional because there are fields that are not, uh, that are man are not mandatory in part of the use cases. So uh, our recommendation and our understanding is to use a different uh, case class for each uh, for each case, uh, which creates another problem. So you have a lot of DTOs, a lot of case class. How do you transform? How do you map one to another? So here we have a nice um, uh, Scala tip for that. And this is another good example why uh, Scala is good for public APIs. Let's take a look at this uh, DTO. So we have a DTO, a JSON, represents what you expect from user to send when he wants to update a customer. So it must send, he must send the ID. Name is optional if he wants to update it, and date of birth. Um, and assume that you want to transform this DTO, this case class, to this case class. OK, so how, how are you going to do it? Um, and, and you want to do it. Um, let's say, in a, in a nice way. So you want to have something like DTO dot to model to transform this object to this object. And what, can, what you, you can do is to use an implicit class and put the logic of this transformation over there. And here you go. You can do DTO dot to model and, and you have the transformation. Very elegant uh, solution. 
Um, yeah, another outburn story over here. So we started doing it not with the implicit case classes, but with implicit uh, functions, methods. It create the code was very um, complicated to understand. It's not. It was not thought uh, readable. Uh, you have one. You have you send an object to a method that expect a different type, and it works. It's very. It looks very elegant for small examples, but when you really build a big uh, uh, API with a lot of classes and a lot of transformation, code is become not readable. Not talking about compilation times that make uh, that becomes very uh, uh, compilation became slower. So don't use it. Um, okay, immutability. Immutability, um, why is it important in, in public APIs? So you can take a look at this example. So uh, we want to allow users to update a customer. So we have a method that, ex that expects a DTO as a case class, and you want to validate it and then to save it. Okay, very uh, straightforward. Uh, and you have a bag. You have a bag and you don't know. You, you, you send the right DTO, but the save in the database is, uh, there is uh, like the field is missing or something like that. So you can, so if, if you, for example, you use Java, you, you can, you should always um, um, don't trust, let's say, the validate method because it might change the object, right? Because you send an object, you don't know what happened over there. Maybe, maybe the method changed the, the object and, and, and set different values in the fields. Uh, but when you use a Scala, for example, everything is, uh, or case classes are immutable and you can focus your debugging process on the, on the right places not and not spend your time on on uh, on paths that are not uh, that cannot change your object um, option option is also very useful um, when building public public api let's stick to the to the example of updating a customer so you can see that id is required field but uh, name and date of birth are uh, uh, optional and you want to validate validation of of in in, in api is a very common practice um, but you want to make sure that you uh, do the validation uh, only on the field that, that, you should, that you expect the user to send. So, for example, in, in the ID, I know for sure that ID is not null, and I can just check that it's not negative, for example, and if it is negative, to throw an exception. But name, name is optional, and it, only if the user wants to update the name, he sends a name, and I want to validate only if name is not empty. So, uh, name exists, uh, length is uh, if it's uh, uh, more than 10, or if date of birth is uh, after now. These are not valid uh, values, and um, the usage of option at the right places is, makes the code much more readable. Um, yeah. uh, okay, don't repeat yourself. If you don't want to repeat yourself, you can use traits. And here is uh, an example, so controllers, we have, if you build a large uh, API, so you probably have several controllers managing several type of entities, and you want to have some, um, let's say, uh, convention about error handling, and to, if you have like um, uh, access denied, so you want to send all, in all controllers to, sh to use the same HTTP code and send the exact same JSON back to the user, so uh, error handling, which is very important in public API, uh, can be uh, uh, consistent. So we um, put all the code inside, for example, base controller, that if, it, uh, if there is some access denied exception, it puts the right uh, HTTP status. But uh, we also have another controller, another base controller, for example, the external controller trait uh, that makes sure that all APIs are, have the same prefix of, uh, of the endpoint. And eventually, when we use uh, uh, the example at the top, you have a concrete controller. It, you, it extends from both uh, uh, from the base class and from the trait. And there we, you, we can reduce uh, our code and not repeat ourselves in, in, uh, in other uh, controllers. Yeah, there are things that are not that uh, perfect in uh, Scala. Uh, enumeration is one of them. So enumeration is also very useful in API because you have like many types and many like uh, your own uh, um, um, kind of, of uh, enumerations or uh, subtypes. And f so if you want to do something like to have a two types of engineer, regular and 10x lower engineer, so you, you need to, uh, enum is good, but for example, you can see that it's not that uh, elegant. 
uh, at least comparing to Java, that enumeration is b works a bit better. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of more to talk about uh, Scala and public API, but I'm almost uh, run out of time. So if you have more questions, so you can ask me later on. Thank you very much.